Hey YouTube, so I woke up this morning with a brand new concept. I like anime. I like giant robots. I like building scale models. I've been taking photos for 10 years. I have beautiful model friends. Put them all together and ladies and gentlemen, we have ourselves the foundations of a brand new adventure to be had. So without further ado, let's channel your inner Bilbo Baggins and let's go. In the not too distant future, the world is ravaged by war. All that is left is an empty, lifeless desert wasteland, and the war machines of old litter the surface. Few remain, and those who do remain are forced to live a dreary existence. Today's story is focused on one of such survivors. Her name is Cutlin. She is a scavenger living off the land. She is a survivor. She finds and rebuilds one of these ancient machines and uses it to fend off unsavory folk, bandits, and ravagers. And she also uses it to go to the supermarket to buy groceries because for some reason in this world, the supermarkets still exist, and they're still owned by multi conglomerate companies. But oh well. And yeah, that's pretty much all I have for backstory and an epic voice, so. And that is when I picked up this guy. This is the Hasegawa Machine Krieger, which is a plastic model kit that I'm gonna build, I'm gonna paint, I'm gonna weather, then I'm gonna take photos of it, take photos of Cutlin, put Cutlin on top and post, and BAM, ladies and gentlemen, we have a brand new concept. So without further ado, let's get cracking. And away we go. So begins the narration. The Hasegawa Machine Krieger obviously has its own lore, it's a very popular series, and like I said, it's something I've always wanted to do. In this case, it's more of a fan fiction as opposed to the official story. I'm pretty sure I'm taking lots of liberties with the scaling as well, because if I'm not mistaken, these Machine Kriegers aren't meant to be that much bigger than humans. But as you saw in the concept sketch, I kind of played around with how big I wanted the Machine Krieger to be in relation to Cutlin. But we'll see how it goes on the shoot and in post. In the meantime, the build itself was pretty fun and enjoyable. I wouldn't say it's the very best simply because I think the engineering wasn't perfect. There were certain parts and sprues that needed to be modified in order for them to fit very weird and awkward sprue locations it wasn't the very best of kits i've built especially in comparison to something like tamiya but nonetheless it was not bad and the build itself was finally complete it's probably not perfect especially since this is mainly for camera so i only really need it to look specifically good from the one angle and now begins the painting process. I primed it first with a metallic gray, and then I proceeded to paint a khaki green base that I then painted over with pink. The whole idea was that it used to be khaki green, but then Cutlin, upon finding it, gives it some new life by painting pink on top of it. I wanted there to be a green base coat simply because I wanted certain bits where the pink paint would chip. And here you can see I'm using the sponge method to create chipping effects. I use the combination of silver and green. Silver for when the chipping goes all the way down to the original metallic material of the robot and the green chips for when it's just the pink layer of paint coming off. Next up was adding the graffiti and customization of Cutlin. Using a contrasting color like yellow would really make it pop, and in this case would really add a layer of customization and personality to the model. After that, it was basically adding in some grime and some rust effects using oil washes and enamel washes to make the exposed metallic bits dirtier, grimier, and more weathered. 
Hey guys, so I have more or less finished the top half of the mech and I've weathered the top half, it looks pretty good already. Normally, I would probably spend even more time with a model and create a base, make it fully, you know, immersed in a little scene or vignette, but because of time constraints and other projects that are due, I won't be able to dedicate as much time as I normally would. Nonetheless, I want to make sure it looks good and good enough so that I have a nice base to work with when I'm in post. Because at the end of the day, practical will always look the best. Nothing beats the real thing. And that brings us to the main point of this video and this whole project is yes, I could have maybe used CG or Photoshop to create the mech in post, but this is frankly the most cost effective and least time consuming way of making it look good, doing it for real. So if you can do it for real, do it for real, because it will look better, trust me. And so after hours and days of painting and laborious weathering, the model was finally complete. And like I said, it is definitely not my best work, but it just needs to look good for the photo and from a very specific angle. So with that done, I think it is finally time to get out of my golem cave and interact with actual human beings. Kind of chilling, kind of like boom. Hey, thank you, boom. <laughs> it's a wrap, ladies and gentlemen. It's a wrap. Let's go. Okay. That'll do. That'll do. Okay, so the shoot is now done. I am just taking some pickup shots of some miscellaneous props and items that I want hanging on the robot, as you can see here. Here I am dressed like an absolute fool because I wanted to populate the scene a little bit more. It felt a little barren and I think it adds to the world building. And so after a couple weeks of building, painting, and a couple days of editing, at long, long last, ladies and gentlemen, the mech girl is finally complete. And here endeth another chapter. It's been a long and arduous road creating this guy. I hope you can see I put a lot of time and effort into each photo that I do and each video that I do. So if you did enjoy today's video, be sure to leave it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And of course, to head over to socials or my website to see the full images and everything else. As always, I've been your boy Seb. Peace. Onto the shelf you go, my friend.